So, I think it's uh, three Septembers ago now. The longer we have this song, the more, the more I have to remember how many Septembers ago it was, but it was important that it was in September. Found myself in Rouen, in France. Uh, it's in Normandy. I actually didn't go to France to specifically see uh, any of the medieval sites. I found out, after one of our English tours, that for the following week and a half, Dieppe, right up on the coast of France, of Normandy, was doing a kite flying festival. And people from everywhere had brought everything from kites bigger than this entire room to these gorgeous little wee kites that you could have them follow people on the beach. They were so <laughs> maneuverable. And the entirety of the downtown beachfront of Dieppe was kites for an entire week. It was gorgeous. So I couldn't pass that up. But Rouen is a very short train ride, um, just in. And Rouen, of course, is very important from a Renaissance, medieval Renaissance standpoint, because in 1431, Joan of Arc was burned at stake. And Joan had been a really intriguing character. Um, I love Joan, because you think where she came from and where she went, it was just astonishing for a woman at the time. She was a 15, 16 year old peasant girl, could barely sign her own name. She was not a city girl, she didn't even know any of this stuff. She had been raised to do what, you know, most of the women of her age were raised to do, you know, take care of your family and your household, be a wife, be a mother, uh, possibly to give some of that up and be a, a sister in a convent. But Joan heard other voices, and those voices told her, uh-uh, you are not meant for that. You are meant to be a warrior, a soldier, which was unheard of at the time. But she followed her unique path, and she presented herself to the Dauphin of France. And the Prince of all France <coughs> looked at this wee girl, who had, as far as he could tell, and as far as we know, had never lifted a sword before. And she came saying that she was going to lead his, his armies into victory after weeks, years, months of invasion by the British. Nobody had ever been able to do that. And so he looks at this girl and goes, ha ha, that's nice, honey, go away, leave me alone. She gets into armor and she does. She goes and joins the fray. This is no girl on a hill. She was wounded in battle. She was right in there with it. And she did start to lead these soldiers into victory after victory after victory. And they started to push the English back. Incredible, absolutely incredible. But eventually Joan was captured and she was handed over to the English, uh, who still held Rouen up by the coast. And for the last few months of her life, she was kept in a dungeon tower. And that dungeon tower is, part of it is still there, not all of it. But the central circular staircase up the middle of this stone tower is still untouched. And I was a little cheeky and I went in a do not enter door, pretending that I didn't know what I was reading. And uh, I found myself on those stairs. And it occurred to me then that, Aunt, that Joan of Arc had been there. Her feet had walked those steps. The real woman. This wasn't a girl who was made up for a book. This was an incredible, incredible woman who had lived and she had been there. So I went up and without getting caught, thankfully, I got about five minutes in there and I sang this to her quietly under my breath and I just felt all the hair stand up. It was just an incredible moment. And I really like Joan because she is, like all of us, a creature of light and dark. And it depends which side you look at her from. Is she a hero or is she terrifying? So this is for her.
They will know.